In this video, I'll present 20 tips that will help you get the most out of Corel Draw, courtesy of Corel Draw Master Ariel Garaza Diaz. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. Most users know that you can double-click the Rectangle Tool icon to create a page frame or a rectangle along the page border. But here's a lesser-known trick of the Rectangle Tool. If you select one or more objects and hold the Shift key while double-clicking the Rectangle icon, this adds a rectangle surrounding the selected objects. In terms of object order, the page frame is always at the bottom, and the rectangle around the selected objects gets placed at the top as the most recent object. There are several ways to duplicate objects in Corel Draw. With nothing selected, the property bar has fields for duplicate distances in X and Y. When an object is selected, you can press Ctrl D on the PC to duplicate, or Command D on the Mac. This creates a single copy using those distances, then you can repeat for more copies. Pressing Alt F7 on the PC opens the Transform Docker. On the Mac, the shortcut is Ctrl T. For a selected object, you can create one or more position copies, one or more rotated copies, and scaled and skewed copies work the same way. With an object selected, start to move it to where you want a copy placed, keeping the left mouse button pressed. While still holding the left mouse button, press the right mouse button, which adds a plus sign to the cursor. When you release both buttons, the copy is placed. Or you can simply drag an object while holding the right mouse button instead of the left. On the PC, you can select Copy Here. On the Mac, the copy is made automatically. Finally, you can select an object, move it to where you want its copy, and press the spacebar to drop the copy. Repeating these steps is a great way to quickly drop lots of copies. To mirror an object, use the Pick tool while holding the Control key or Command on the Mac, and click and drag a side handle. To make a mirrored copy, do the same thing, but while still holding the left mouse button, press the right mouse button. If you hold the Control or Command key while rotating an object, the rotation will be in 15 degree increments. You can change these increments by choosing Tools, Options, Corel Draw, and opening the Edit page. On the Mac, choose Corel Draw, Preferences, Corel Draw. When the object you want is inside a group, or in a group within a group, it can be tough to select that object with the Pick tool. But a handy shortcut is to keep the Control or Command key pressed while selecting. When a group is selected, the handles are circles rather than squares, and you can keep Control or Command clicking to drill down into subgroups to get the object you want. To select multiple objects within the same group, press Shift while also holding Control or Command. In a crowded drawing, it can be tough to use a marquee selection that surrounds multiple objects, particularly when zoomed in. But if you hold the Alt key while dragging the marquee, you'll select everything the marquee encloses or touches. Here are a few quick zoom shortcuts. Your mouse scroll wheel can be used to zoom in and out based on where your cursor is located. If you prefer to use the scroll wheel for scrolling instead, choose Tools Options Corel Draw, or on the Mac, Corel Draw Preferences Corel Draw. And on the display page, you can switch from zoom to scroll. Pressing the Z shortcut key activates the zoom tool, where you can left click to zoom in and right click to zoom out. But if you want a quick zoom without activating the zoom tool, PC users can press F2. You can either click to zoom in or drag a zoom window. Pressing F3 zooms out. On the Mac, Command plus and Command minus zoom in and out. To zoom to one or more selected objects, 
press Shift F2 on the PC or Command 3 on the Mac. To zoom to all objects, you can double click the zoom icon or press F4 on the PC or Command 2 on the Mac. If you have a power clip whose contents aren't quite right, you can easily adjust it. With the object selected, Control or Command click the object to edit the power clip. The power clip outline appears in blue, and you can select and adjust the object inside. When finished, Control or Command click in blank space. This technique can also be used on a symbol, rollover, or symmetry. For PC users, a great feature of CorelDRAW is the ability to customize toolbars and other parts of the UI. But if you accidentally move or remove a tool or another component from its default spot, you may want to start over with the default settings. To do this, close CorelDRAW, then press and hold the F8 key while relaunching. To reset on a Mac, you can hold Shift while relaunching. Answer yes when you see the pop-up asking about resetting to factory defaults. Keep in mind that you'll lose any customizations you've set up. On the PC, if you want to keep your customized settings, choose Tools, Options, Workspaces, and use the Export option to save the settings you want as a CDWS file. You can bring back the saved workspace by clicking the Import button. To select all objects on a page, you can use the familiar Control A shortcut on the PC or Command A on the Mac. Another way to do the same thing is to double click the Pick Tool icon. To select all nodes along an object, first select the object with the Pick Tool, then double click the Shape Tool icon. When all nodes are selected, you can change them all at once, such as making them smooth or symmetrical. Now let's say we want to break the curve into subpaths, which you can do with the Shape tool by adding a breakpoint and clicking the Break Curve icon. To select all nodes in a subpath, while the Shape tool is still active, keep Control and Shift pressed, or Command and Shift on the Mac, while selecting any node on that path. Here's a quick way to make a zigzag line. First, create a line using the Freehand or Two-Point Line tool. Then select the End node with the Shape tool, and either click Add Nodes or press the plus sign on your numeric keypad. This adds nodes at each midpoint, producing a set of evenly spaced nodes. Then, with the Control or Command key pressed, select every other node and move them all together. For a wavy line, Double-click the Shape Tool icon to select all nodes, click Convert to Curve, then click Smooth Node or Symmetrical Node. Here are a few shortcuts for text layout and formatting. Each involves Ctrl-K for breaking text and Ctrl-L for combining text. On the Mac, these are Command-K and Command-L. For artistic text comprised of multiple lines, Selecting the text and pressing Ctrl-K produces a separate artistic text object for each line. To recombine them, select them in order and press Ctrl-L. The same is true for paragraph text. Ctrl-K breaks the text into separate objects. If you select and combine with Ctrl-L, you'll have to extend the text box. This applies to words and characters as well. For artistic text, selecting and pressing Ctrl-K breaks the sentence into words, and if a word is selected, pressing Ctrl-K breaks the word into characters. Ctrl-L puts them back together. Paragraph text can be broken into words and characters the same way. And finally, if you have paragraph text divided into columns, Ctrl-K breaks the text into separate objects for each column. As I mentioned in the last tip, Control L or Command L can be used to combine text, as in this example of a sentence broken into words. 
This works if the words are selected in order, but with lots of words it's easier to use a marquee selection. Pressing Ctrl-L assembles the words in the wrong order this way, but you can press Ctrl-Z or Command-Z to undo, keep the words selected, and press Ctrl or Command-L again to get the right order. While on the subject of text, there are shortcuts for reducing and enlarging a selected text object. On the PC, pressing Ctrl-6 enlarges text according to the preset list of sizes, and Ctrl-4 reduces text size the same way. On the Mac, the shortcuts are Command-6 and Command-4, which increase or reduce the font size by 10 points. Using Ctrl or Command-8 enlarges the size one point at a time, and Control or Command 2 reduces the same way. Copying attributes can be done in a few different ways. You can select one or more objects whose attributes you want to change and choose Edit, Copy Properties From. Select the properties to copy, click OK, and click the object whose attributes you want to apply. On the PC, with the Pick tool active, if you press and hold the right mouse button while dragging one object onto another, when you release the mouse button, you'll get a menu with options to copy fill, outline, or all properties. On the Mac, hold shift while dragging with the right mouse button, which copies the object fill to the target object. The Attributes eyedropper is another tool for quickly copying attributes and other properties to several objects at once. In the property bar, you can choose the properties to copy, as well as any transformations and effects. Click the object whose attributes you want to copy, then click the objects where the attributes are to be applied. If you marquee select multiple objects and use either combine or weld, the resulting object will have the attributes of the object that was created first, the one at the bottom of the order. So in this example, the resulting curve will have the attributes of the yellow rectangle. But if you select the objects one at a time while holding the Shift key, the resulting objects will have the attributes of the last object selected. Selection order is also important when using the Trim tool. If you marquee select objects and click the Trim icon, it's the bottom object that gets trimmed by the objects above. But by selecting objects one at a time, you can control what gets trimmed. In this example, two trim operations are needed to trim each circle, each time by selecting the circle last. To create a barcode, choose Object Insert Barcode and follow the steps in the wizard. The resulting barcode object can be edited by double clicking to reopen the wizard but you can change color or font. To make these adjustments, you can use Ctrl or Command X to cut the barcode, or Ctrl or Command C to copy it, then choose Edit, Paste Special, and choose the Picture Metafile option. The new object is a group of vector objects, which you can ungroup, select text and change color or font, then regroup again. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on productivity tips in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.